Hi there. In today's video, I'm going to introduce two new units that I've created and they are available for free. Let me show you where you can get them. So I put them under Spock package. So if you haven't seen this before, this is a package of all the units that I'm trying to collect. And currently there are over 60 of them. So you can scroll down and right here under download demo, you can find the Spock 2.00 save and load data. So you can see that it's actually version two. And the reason is that I'm trying to make a major change of Spock and it is so that the performance of all the units are going to be improved. I have not released the Spock two version yet. I'm finalizing that work, but I decided to provide these two units so that you can see what to expect and to get some input from you guys about it. Now let's go take a look at these two units. Once you download that package, just drag the package into the assets. And right here, you can see that there are the two units, load data from file and save data to file. This was one of the requests that I got on Discord for creating something like this. And if you want to request for units to be added to this package, I did create a fast website. I'll do more work on it, but in the itch.io page, you can find a link right here to smartpenguins.io request unit. And under here, you can write a description of what unit you want here. Load JSON data to uh, VS, for instance click request unit and you can request more than one unit. I'll be going through that data and based on that, I'll be adding new units to the package. So that is if you are interested in participating in that. Now, after the units are imported, the folder is created here, Spock. To get access to those units, you need to run regenerate nodes so that those nodes or units are going to be added for you to use. Once that is done, we can go and start using them. So I'm just going to create a new script on a camera and in here. Now, if we look currently, they are under custom, but I'm going to change that here. We have the two units load data from file and save data to file. So let's add both of those in. So custom, you can also search for these names, but here are the two units. And so how you use a save unit, you can create a variable, call it data. I'm going to set it up uh, the way that I would actually use the data for saving it. So what I would do is actually use a dictionary. And in this dictionary, you can uh, use a string for specifying a key. So let's say this is going to be storing my coin count. So coins and let's use an integer for that. Let's put in 10 as a starting point. Then we can add another, for instance, a level to say what level we're currently on. And let's say we're at level two and you can continue on like that. Now to save it, all we have to do is just drag in here pass that as the data input and specify the file path. Now the file is going to be located in the project folder. So if you want to have it in assets right now, you can add assets before that. So you can see it in the project. So and let's make sure we also change that to be read from there as well. Now I can save that on start. And then when it's saved, let's load the data and on low, we will log a message. So let's say log message. Now this is a dictionary, so we can get dictionary item. That is our dictionary. And for the key, we can pass in the string. So let's say we're going to print out the coins, pass that to the log message. And since we are using the dictionary as our data type, on load, we need to specify what type of data that we're loading. Since we want a dictionary and we're saving the dictionary right here, I have an option for data type. So it's a drop down, plain or list. If you're just storing a string or integer, a float, that sort of value, you can use plain or list. 
C Sharp will be able to recognize those types and convert them properly. But if you're using a dictionary as your base, you need to specify a dictionary. So in our case, I'm using a dictionary, so specify the dictionary. But also, I do have two more other options here. And it is if you want more complexity in the data that you store. So if you want a list of dictionaries stored as a data, you can do that. If you want to store a dictionary of dictionaries, you can do that as well. But I'm just using a dictionary, so we're going to select that. And now let's go to console, click play, and we should expect to see that coin count here. So there we go. We have that coin count of 10. Now, if we go to the project, enter our assets folder, refresh the page, and here is the data. You can see how the data is actually stored here. Let's open it in Visual Studio, and I am using a JSON format here. So if you want to actually add more data through here, you can add that. Well, let's just use name. And then if you want to have a string, you put it in double quotes as well. And let's call it test. Click Save. And now you can use that data instead. So instead of using coins, let's pull up the name. Let's make sure we don't save our current data. Otherwise, it's going to overwrite it. And we can go and test that now. So click Play. And there is that value, test. Now, you can't store all types of variables here. So you're actually limited to what you can store here based on what is supported on a JSON. So if we go here, the types that we can store are float, integers, string, and Boolean. You can also store lists of those types. So you can have a list of floats and you can store that. So those types you can store at any amount of level you want. I also said that you can use dictionaries. But dictionaries are limited into this hierarchy that I have for loading. So the root is a dictionary. You create a list of dictionaries. Or you also can do dictionary of dictionaries. So if you want to mix in this dictionary with another dictionary, this won't work because this value at first is actually an integer. And the second value is a dictionary currently the load unit does not support that. So if you like these units, write something in the comments, click on that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.